our next speaker. Hacks banks by day and other random things at night. Currently, sex toys. The focus of his job description. Yep. So his focus for his talk today is to explore the under-researched branch of IoT and the security and privacy threats that exist. So to present on this talk of IoT of dongs, ladies and gentlemen, Renderman. Hello. So yes, I am Renderman. This is Murdoch Monkey. Um, just so you know, I did a little biohacking on my liver last night, and so when I was working on the slides, I uh, guess you forgot to hit save. So <laughs> I was just sitting in the back hacking together something. So if this seems a little disjointed, uh, I apologize. Um, this is a serious talk. Let's, you know, try to be adults here, vaguely. I mean, there are no children in here, right? Okay, good. I don't want to pay therapy bills. Um, so yes, Internet of Things. We all know about it. Manufacturers not, you know, the security on them is terrible. They don't have a way to update them or they just don't care. Um, users don't consider the security and privacy of using these things until it's way too late. Uh, groups like I Am The Cavalry are doing amazing work on, you know, automotive, medical, but nobody wanted to touch sex toys for some reason. So, but you know, this shows that IoT is permeating every part of our lives, including one of the most private bedroom activities. So yes, sex toys are now being connected to the internet. For a lot of people, that's like they can't grok that, you know, initially, let alone that there's you know, security issues. Um, Basically what we're looking at is, is sex toys, Kegel exercisers, genital rings. If it goes into your genitals, your genitals go into it, or it goes around genitals, that's when we're worried. Uh, those, are, those are the devices we're worried about. So. Um, a large number of, of uh, IoT research firms, yeah, they didn't want to look at this because you know, there's stigmas around sex. Uh, we have a very weird thing in North America about sex. You know, we'll, we'll watch all the violence we want on television, but you know, can't see two people have sex. Like, makes no sense to me. Um, so it started basically because I had had the idea rolling around in my head for about 10 years, happened to mention it uh, to the purveyor of a, uh, a adult toy store uh, back home in Edmonton, and she was like, this is a good idea. I do all these in-home uh, uh, demonstrations and, you know, it, it's like a Tupperware party but different kind of Rubbermaid. Um, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I've got some, you know, old models, you know, ones where the batteries don't work or broken power connector and that gave me the these old demo ones. And uh, yeah, started diving into this stuff and shit got real, real quick. Because when you now realize it, the question is, is hijacking the remote control of a connected sex toy sexual assault? I hear that uncomfortable giggling, but no, think about it. You know, you, uh, you, know, you, you have a partner, you give them permission to control your, this device, someone else hijacks the connection, that person does not have permission, that fits the definition of sexual assault. Um, there has been several cases of uh, uh, rape, by de rape by deception um, where it was like you know, if your, your uh, twin brother has sex with your wife kind of thing. It's uh, very interesting because it's, they usually uh, are uh, dismissed on some sort of technicality. Again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I really want to put an interesting query into the EFF about this. Um, Canada's sexual assault laws uh, specifically define you cannot consent obtained by fraud is not consent. So in this case, yes, if you're impersonating someone, you know, by hijacking their account or whatever, yes, that is not, you know, consent goes to the person at the other end, not the account. Um, but it gets really weird when you start looking at laws because these are devices that are voluntarily used. Um, it's the same data that, you know, their intimate partner would be sending, but not by that same person. But if you find out that it wasn't the person you thought it was controlling it, the emotional horror and, and trauma from that is, you know, should not be anywhere uh, dismissed or, or, you know, feel any less than a, a physical assault. So, um, probably all heard about the WeVibe lawsuit after uh, DEF CON last year. Um, for those of you who weren't around, a uh, Goldfisk and follower did a talk uh, where they found a number of uh, issues with the, the WeVibe. Um, full disclosure, I had actually put in the exact same talk that uh, came to the exact same conclusions as them. Uh, they got selected. Uh, they were first time speakers. I've speak, spoken way too many times here. Um, all boiled down to they didn't have the right privacy policy in the app. It basically was the privacy policy from their website 
So it didn't, you know, I was mentioning, you know, cookies and stuff like that. It didn't disclose, you know, some of the information that they're collecting from the app and the device. And yeah, they got nailed to the wall because, hey, you know, if I had known that this was doing this, I wouldn't have bought it. Deceptive advertising, such. Absolutely no evidence of, of malfeasance. You know, data didn't leak. They weren't abusing it. You know, weren't doing dossiers on users or anything. Um, it was just literally a paperwork oversight. So the biggest lawsuit regarding all this stuff had absolutely nothing to do with you know actual like technical privacy or security, but just legal paperwork. Uh, they settled for five million dollars in a class action lawsuit, um, and uh, we should be finding out in the next two three weeks uh, how much. Uh, people actually get out of that. Uh, it could be up to 10 grand if you'd use the app and the, the device. Um, the interesting part is WeConnect was actually one of the better apps even before all this. You know, they were one of the best ones I had tested. Um, you know, they still had some issues, but yeah, they were actually doing SSL, um, at least halfway is right. Um, they were, you know, doing a lot of things that uh, you would expect. Um, after they uh, got hit with this lawsuit and the, the Goldfisk and followers talk, uh, they stepped up and basically re uh, completely uh, re-engineered their app. Uh, it's now kind of like the gold standard I have for other vendors. It's like you need to be doing all the stuff that they're doing. Uh, you know, they got rid of things like you don't need uh, to create an account to use it. You know, so there's no personal information being collected there. Um, allows for you know. You start it out the first time, it says, hey, would you like to opt out of anonymous data collection? Cool, you know, gives people the, the chance right there the first time. Um, looks like they're actually doing certificate pinning. Like, holy crap. <laughs> um, still some issues. Uh, my favorite is that uh, you still can't visit their website over SSL. Like, and I, I've been hammering on them that for like 18 months and they still have not gotten back to me at all. It's just, it's hilarious. Um, probably also heard about the, the CMI uh, controversy. Uh, this is a vibrator with a embedded webcam. Hey, I don't judge. You know. um, basically, it, it's because it's doing video, it needs bandwidth. And uh, uh, so it uses Wi Fi. Uh, when you start it up, it's, it becomes its own access point. So you connect your, your tablet, phone, whatever to it. Um, so it's not actually connecting to the internet or anything like that. Um, so you can you know, view the stream, control it from uh, uh, your phone. It's basically it's an RA link system on a chip uh, running BusyBox. Uh, interesting to note, um, yeah, I smuggled my uh, uh, GPG keychain across the border on a dong because <laughs> there's about eight megs of storage available on here. So <laughs> proof of concept, I had to do it. Um, I've also, there's the embedded web server and uh, yes, I have actually hosted a website, you know, an internet on a dong. Um, literally all it is is a reworked, uh, you know, cheap Chinese IP camera that they, you know, made fit in the, the particular container. Uh, that's a picture of my nose. Um, Pentest Partners, uh, Ken Monroe, is he here? No? Okay. Uh, he's probably over at IoT Village. Uh, Literally, this thing was in the air from Amazon when they uh, uh, released their report. Uh, they had found all the same things I had already in the software. I hadn't, didn't have the hardware yet to confirm a, a last view. Um, while the report was factually correct, uh, correct, there was a lot of like innuendo and, and jokes and, and just juvenile humor. Uh, they released it under a pseudonym of you know uh, Bill DeJour. It's like, really, guys? You know, come on. We're professionals here. So I took some exception with that, posted a rebuttal saying that, yes, your evidence of, of uh, risks was true, but you blew it out of proportion. Like, oh my god, these things are Wi-Fi, so they're broadcasting you know, to anyone, and you know, war drivers can pick this up and add it to you know, Wiggle.net. You know, I show a, a screenshot of Wiggle.net. Well, if you actually log in to Wiggle and you know, use the see me I, uh, SSID and search, you find two. Both of them are, are roughly the same location outside a four-story sex shop in downtown Tokyo. So out of, oh Christ, I forget how many they're up to, they're like you know, 600 million access points uh, uh, cataloged. Two. 
and it's you know demo stuff in like an incredibly packed part of town. So like, yeah, the risk is very very minimal on that. Um, yes, there was a, a default pin uh, that, <laughs> interestingly, uh, their previous software didn't give you any way to change it or none of the instructions. It would tell you repeatedly, change the password, change the password, but not how. <laughs> um, so I posted this rebuttal and, uh, you know, uh, working with, with Ken Monroe and that, uh, they made a bunch of press, but unfortunately, you know, this whole project didn't get mentioned, so I'm like, Ken! <laughs> but uh, no, I got them on the same page. But it shows that people are paying attention, you know, that the public is now considering this. So vendors were already freaked out by the Wii Vibe suit. Seeing this, you know, getting dragged through the mud didn't help them much either. Um, it was also a great example because they had tried to, you know, uh, do a coordinated disclosure with the vendor, but they never replied. Like, this is why you need vulnerability uh, disclosure programs that actually, you know, are acted upon problems. The problem with these things is that you have, you know, the potential for really dumbass regulations and stuff like that. I mean, you got some 70 or 80 year old geriatric, uh, uh, you know, congressman or senator trying to figure out uh, this technology, and it's like, oh my god, that's aberrant. You're like, oh my god, you know, sex. You know, considering that they're probably also doing their secretary or something. Um, you know, it's like you're looking for solutions to a problem that doesn't exist. Um, it may not be your thing. But doesn't everyone deserve privacy and security in what they do? You know, even if you don't agree with it. If not, you're wanting people to be hurt. Uh, you're a terrible human being. Um, and it's issues like that that is why I started this project. Um, so, Internet of Dawn .gs, uh, If you're in case you're wondering, .gs is South Sandwich Islands. Uh, top level domain. So, I had actually inquired with some friends that uh, do the issue CVEs. There's a big thing with like IoT stuff. They don't know how to issue a CVE for some of it because it's you know using other project software, but you know it's only for this device it's configuration. So I was like, screw it. Uh, so I'm doing dong vulnerability exposure IDs, um, mostly for for my own sanity. Of when uh, I was submitting things, it would be like a half a dozen things, and I wanted to make sure that none of them were were forgotten. So having you know an identifier helped, uh, but also the reports. You know you can actually start seeing what sort of uh, issues are are happening. Um, I've already helped uh, a number of vendors build vulnerability, vulnerability disclosure and management programs. Because uh, if somebody finds something, why the hell aren't you just making it easy to report? They're giving you free work. Like you know, makes sense. Um, again, non-judgmental. Just want to see have people you know use these things uh, privately and securely. Um, so the vast majority of these are Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth LE. This is about the only Wi-Fi one. Uh, they pair to a smartphone or a tablet for local control, uh, but also as a gateway for uh, remote control via the internet. Uh, a few have some desktop applications as well. XMPP is a very common control channel on these. Uh, provides you know text chat functions as well, uh, but they'll also do text, audio, and video chat. Like they are full-fledged, you know video teleconferencing and teledildonics suites. So um, lots of, of interesting attack surfaces there when you think about it between the text, the audio, and the video. Uh, almost always there's some sort of interaction with a, a company server for brokering the connection or, or you know, finding each other or something. But uh, you know, it, it's trying to convince vendors that it's like you need to be as hands off as you can possibly be. Because yes, it might be easier to do things this way, where you tag you know, unique identifiers to everybody. But no, that that that's where things get weird. So the more hands off you can be, the better. You know, this is basics. Um, yeah, we're all pretty familiar with how this sort of thing should work. So so far, 27 vulnerabilities reported, uh, 17 fixed. Uh, though I haven't checked in the last week. Uh, four complete or partial user databases two complete remote hijacks, uh, one set of GPS locations for all users on, that were online at the time. Uh, I've got eight vendors that are on board uh, with doing vulnerability disclosure programs. I'm helping them uh, uh, basically to realize, hey, you're a software company now, whether you want it to be or not, you're going to have to do certain things. Uh, four have reached what I, I consider a trusted partner level and means that they have a, a very good and well-established uh, vulnerability disclosure program. They're being proactive. And uh, just uh, fully embracing the idea that okay, we need to be secure. 
Um, 22 test devices uh, in this you know, lovely hand cut foam uh, case, which is really fun as carry on. Um, <laughs> one corporate sponsor and a very confused mother. So, yes, we were supported by Pornhub. Uh, <laughs> wait, you're all familiar with that? Oh, I thought it was just some obscure little site. Yeah? Um, drunken email to their marketing people saying, hey, here's the project. Uh, we're going to buy some of these devices. They're expensive. You know, can, we, can you help somehow? Uh, immediately you got a reply, yep, we're on board, we, we love this. Uh, originally they were trying to get some of the vendors to send in free stuff. Um, eventually just settled on, here's a big pile of cash. So yes, I got a bank transfer uh, from Pornhub for keeping my clothes on. Like, that just seems <laughs> weird, but again, try explaining that one to your mother. Um, this is really weird research. Uh, I'm generally not embarrassed or shocked or, or anything like that. But still, it's the things you see, you know, it's not necessarily for the, the timid um, because people have some interesting fetishes. There are people who like the idea of a random anonymous person on the internet controlling their vibrator. But that's, you know, uh, uh, informed consent, you know, that's your thing. Um, but the, the vulnerabilities that you find are, are just shocking. So um, not everyone knows how to do SSL if they're using it at all. User information, personal information disclosure, partner disclosure, GPS, permissions, blah, blah, blah. Um, almost, I'd say at least half, do, if they're doing SSL, allow whole host name verifier, which basically turns off SSL certificate checking. So you can stick any certificate in there for easy man in the middle. So why did you implement SSL in the first place? Like you just turned it off, basically. Um, a lot of these devices, when you think about it, you know, a spouse that's traveling for work or something, you know, they're probably using them in hotels, which are shared networks a lot of times. So uh, I don't know if anybody here has ever, you know, done sniffing on wireless networks, but uh, it's amazing what other people will be doing. Um, it's amazing how many people watch porn in airports. Uh, yeah. User enumeration, you can uh, found variations of this where you could basically find out if a certain email address has uh, an account there for whatever purpose. Um, so with Lovents, you could basically do a simple query and it would just come back with true or false. No authentication, no tokens required, no nothing. Like anyone, anywhere on the internet can just do a, a get request and, you know, it comes back with true or false. Um, so took my personal address book of about 275 addresses and ran that through, just proof of concept. I have some friends with some surprising interests. <laughs> I didn't know this. But this shows you can find out things about people that maybe they don't want to share. So um, one of them was a, fr a friend doing a, a Bluetooth research and had some of the, the Lovence devices. Uh, he didn't know about my, my project, so it was really funny to email him and say, dude, why, why do you have these? And he's like, holy shit, you know, th that uh, I was able to find this. Uh, ramped it up the Ashley Madison dump, dumped all the, the government addresses I could find, you know, queried about 10,000. They've already had enough uh, uh, damage to their lives. Uh, I'm not going to disclose anything, but there was a handful of trues um, from very interesting places. Um, oh my God. Uh, the app has a search function for finding you know, potential partners. Uh, if you do some of them, if you have a, a privacy bit set for, for public, you could do a partial username search and you'd come up in the, the list. Uh, if you had the privacy bit set to private, it would you had to know the entire username and that's the only way you can connect. But in the GUI it limited you to uh, I believe three characters as the minimum but only through the GUI. If you did the query directly, single characters which means A through Z, zero through nine, you now have all the public. Um, lots of interesting information there but it got worse because my uh, Padawan, a uh, student I'm, I'm mentoring, uh, figured out that you just throw a couple of double quotes in that and yeah, you, you click and it's like, oh, this is taking a while. Because there's a 32 meg JSON reply of everything, <laughs> private or not. Like the whole bloody database, like 50,000 users, here's everything. Um, of course, I'd also include the URL for all the uh, uh, profile photos and I made the mistake of downloading all of them. That's, I have now got more dick pics than I know what to do with. <laughs> Um, some apps are more social, you know, they have ways to find, you know, new friends. Sometimes a server provides more info. Like, you know, you can uh, uh, post, so you can post a, a, a vibration pattern 
and you know, do so anonymously but in the return from the server it still includes the user's email address. <laughs> so you're not helping. Um, an anonymous username now has its associated email disclosed to others for you know, whatever sort of spam or, or hijacking purposes. But think about this, things like cam model sites, you know, the potential for stalking and harassment, you know, if information is disclosed about their location or their private details, that's scary, right? Um, partner disclosure. Uh, Larry Pesci, DEF CON 22, showed this one. Uh, didn't report it at the time, the bastard. But it has been reported and fixed now where he was basically able to, you know, query for username your vagina and it would respond with your partner's nickname, Hacks of the Matrix. Um, yeah, it, so you could tell and build social graphs of who was connected to who because you could connect to multiple people over time and it would still report over time. Um, skip that one because we're running short on time. Yeah. I'll let you figure out what that's about. Uh, embedded API keys, they're always fun. Uh, I have one that uh, has left their uh, admin AP, uh, MailChimp API key in the app, unobfuscated. Full access to their marketing mail lists, user, you know, uh, uh, subscriber lists and everything so you can query all that and send mail as them if you really wanted to. They're not replying to my emails. I may have to send an email to them from themselves uh, <laughs> or just drop an O-Day, you know. So it's all good for a reason. You know, some of this is funny but there are serious concerns. Uh, security and privacy should be in all IoT, especially these devices. As you've seen, this is just a quick few examples, there's a lot more, where they're not. This industry literally does not know what they don't know. They have been hardware manufacturers of, of manually operated devices until very recently. They don't have people like us around to say, hey, that's not a good idea. They just are never interacting with us. Uh, so I'm trying to build some bridges to, to wake them up to the reality and when you hand them their 50,000 user database on a silver platter you have their undivided attention. Um, yes, this means I have a bag full of sex toys to travel with but you know, this, for me this is a, a serious issue. Um, and you know, difference between uh, screwing around in science is writing it down, so. Um, yep. Uh, basically several of the vendors that I'd helped have actually approached me and wanting to start some sort of trade group or consortium or something like that to adopt a uh, uh, voluntary privacy uh, and security set of standards that they then you know would adhere to through like a third party audit or some sort of transparency report to basically say hey we take security seriously here's how we take it seriously you know full disclosures and you know having vulnerability disclosure programs it makes them makes the uh, uh, consumers aware yes there are risks yes we are dealing with them uh, it's not just you know ignoring them or anything like that um, still try to figure that out I don't know if it's going to be a seal of approval on the box you know you can see my face on there going <laughs> it's, it's secure no um, still ways off still trying to figure out how to do it because I have no idea what I'm doing with this project it's a new area for me there's other things like you know, Google Play in the App Store, uh, Apple App Store, they will ban adult apps for random reasons. Well, then that means you break the update cycle. So, yes, the manufacturer may fix an issue, but it's not getting pushed out. So, you have to, you know, people have to sideload apps and stuff like that. So, you're making them turn off security. I'm like, that's dumb. Um, data collection in uh, from users in places where sex toys are illegal. Um, I believe one of the southern states uh, it is still, I believe uh, Texas, it is illegal to own more than six uh, sex toys. So I won't be going to Texas anytime soon. But you know, you can see how data harvesting might be an issue. Um, physical harm as we found out with Samsung, you know, lithium ion batteries burst into flames. Um, considering where these things are generally put, uh, that would make your day suck. Uh, and I'm waiting for things like the first divorce case to cite, you know, oh yeah, the guy's, uh, uh, the app, uh, remote vibrator app was connected to his secretary's device, not his wife's, you know, like that sort of thing. So, anyways, hope I convince you that there are some serious issues here. Because they're not regulated like medical devices, there are no standards or anything like that. So, as the public, we have to hold them to said standards. Um, get over the discomfort, you know, these are the, the exact same chipsets that are in so many like fridges and children's toys and everything like that, it's just different packaging. Um, we need your help. 
to educate people and, and say, hey, guys, let's, let's raise the bar. So uh, if you're interested in this, I will be around. I'm uh, trying to organize a, a hackathon, uh, probably at the IoT Village, to, you know, people can uh, uh, start taking apart apps and give you some help there. If you're good at, like, policy writing and stuff like that, I could really use some help for, like, the, the uh, voluntary framework. Um, buy me a beer so I can wipe away some of the memories of the things I've seen. Uh, and we also have a, a Patreon to just offset the few op costs we have for like, you know, server time and software and that. So, all right, cool. Thank you.